We originally called this project our next house. There is this ongoing joke in architecture profession of house one, house two, house three. So we thought, wouldn't it just be sort of tongue in cheek if we just said, well, this is the next one. Our house is a really perfect example of the idea of focusing on a small home that really is a luxurious home. I think the best thing about living small is that you can't collect too much junk. You have to be very selective as to what you want to put in the house. It doesn't really compromise on anything. It's really full of a wonderful sense of richness, richness of material, richness of space, richness of experience. Our home is just under a thousand square feet. We started the house as a small scale one bedroom project. We found out we were expecting and decided it'd be easier to add on to this house. We came up with a plan to add a second space that stayed in scale with the original house. The second bedroom had to be lower in scale. That's why we had the step down from the original piece of the house into the lower scale piece that's the bedroom. We pushed it further to the back of the property so it looks secondary from the street. We tried to keep all of the elements of the house distinct. We have the little projecting volumes on the original house or all the storage volumes. It's the kitchen, it's the book storage, then we have the roof that essentially folds over. And then the windows are essentially the things that fill in the gap. Windows in this house are super important. They really are part of that idea of focusing the indoor-outdoor relationship. The windows are set at different elevations throughout the space. So if you're sitting down, you have a different view to the outside than if you're standing up. It just has a sense of liveliness to it and connection that just makes you feel better. Well, my husband Mark and I have been working in architecture now for close to 20 years. Small-scale spaces for a long time, that was something we were really interested in. One of the best ways to explore the small-scale design is really to scale the furniture and sort of the room layouts. So we are book people. So how did we fit those in a small house? Well, we came up with the idea where we have a series of moving bookcases that allow us to slide the books back and forth. We really thought about it like it's an old school Pullman train car. We don't have corridors. We don't have dedicated kitchen space. Each one of the rooms has discrete zones. So when you're in the living room, you're in kind of the living room, dining room, kitchen, but you get a sense of being in a unique spot within that space. We were very hands-on in this project. Ann and I actually built our first house by ourselves. Over the years, we got a little bit more adventurous. Literally the first, you know, concrete wall, we built all the formwork and poured the concrete. We're definitely all about playing around and trying things out. We really like to focus on the idea of juxtaposing textures. This introduction of different materials makes a different contrast and different light patterns and different texture quality possible. The fineness of a really elegant wood juxtaposed against the rawness of industrial looking concrete. The effect is this nice warm balance between the two. Ann and I have a really great Finnish art glass collection and over the years family members have given us Italo glass birds and we were trying to figure out what we should do with our bird collection. In the bedroom, there is a walnut feature wall, and we happen to have, from a prior project, a bunch of aluminum discs that were left over from a custom wine rack that we had done for a client. We discovered that if we trimmed these little discs, they were perfect size for the birds. They essentially become birds that sit within the tree itself. One of my favorites is really the little library connecting space. It's the circulation space between the original house and the addition. And its form is generated about going around the trees. So the little diagonal jog that is in our library space is all about letting the building slide past one of the existing pecan trees, I'm trying to be respectful of the site in which it inhabits. And it's perfect in the morning if you sit and have coffee and you can watch the sunrise because the whole space will just glow. One of the spaces that we really enjoy is the bedroom space. Our master bedroom is completely different than the other spaces of the house. It is really meant to be a quiet space. It's like you're sitting out in the garden space because you have windows on two sides. The girls really like playing in the house because they can run everywhere. They sort of sense it like it's a big jungle gym. You can't go off and be closeted in your own space. You're always sort of participating in the daily life of the house. Our kids 
love that they live in a glass house. I think it really reinforces a sense of adventureness that they have. This has been sort of an organic evolution for us. This house really has grown into such a refined little idea itself that if we did anything else to it, it would really take away from it and make it into something that it isn't. With the three girls and a two bedroom house, we probably have, you know, five years before we have to come up with another version. 